hi <laughs> this is my very first book vlog book video <laughs> so this is the first time i'm coming on here and talking about books i chose this book to be my first book review because i've seen so many like skewed reviews about this book and I just kind of wanted to share my thoughts on it and maybe find other people that resonate with me. I just really want to dive in and get into like the meat and potatoes of why I feel like this book is very, very good and probably one of my favorite books of the year. And the book that I'm going to be talking about today is The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. And I can't tell you, I read this book in two days. Two and a half days and that's only because i had to work so this book really caught me by surprise i was so amazed by how like refreshing it was for like my brain to it just wasn't what i have been reading lately which is again like the romance the high fae fantasy type of stuff that we've been seeing all over youtube and all over book talk so it was definitely newer for me in that regard and I really enjoyed that. And that's probably one of the reasons why I liked it so much is because it was so different from what I've been reading in a positive way. One of the main things that people have said for not liking this book is the writing style. And I have to disagree, I don't know. I think it's not, it's pretentious, but so intentionally done that it's 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 nice. Like I actually enjoyed it. I feel like it really tells a story of the characters and their mind versus, yeah, they're younger. Actually, only two of the main characters are really considered younger because they just graduated college. But everyone else, you know, they're in their late 20s, early 30s and they obviously are highly intelligent, which is why they were chosen to be the Atlas Six, which I should probably get into the summary of this whole thing, right? So if you haven't read the book, the Atlas Six is, um, I would say sci-fi fantasy, urban fantasy. Yeah, I would say urban fantasy. We're set into this world where it's modern day, but in, you know, they have like magicians and medians thrown into the whole mix of everything. And um, basically the entire concept is that the Library of Alexandria was in fact not burnt down and has been kept a secret for many, many years by the Alexandrian society. And every 10 years, six initiates are chosen to kind of compete and the, they're the best of the best in the world of medians. They have a lot of power and they're chosen to essentially guard this library with the rest of the society. So six people are chosen um, to kind of, I guess, compete against one another, but only five are initiated into the actual society. And you have one year to really hone your craft of whatever it is, whatever that power is that you have. So the six main characters are who we get to see and it's written in third person, which again, very refreshing for me. I feel like most of the books I've read are in first person, um, single point of view. And I really like that there's multiple points of views. I know it can be really confusing, but just stick with it if you haven't read. It really challenges you to pay attention to what you're reading and just with memory of you know who's saying what, where are they in time, everything like that. Because it does go forward and backwards in time. So that can be really confusing. And again, with the writing style being a little more um, flamboyant, I guess, it can also seem kind of confusing. But again, I just stuck with it. I read a little slower than I normally do. And I found that to be, I just found the story really compelling. The characters themselves are very fun. Um, they're all really crazy. I don't know. I think that the, 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 the characters have a lot of issues that are very relatable to people or can be, which I enjoyed. I found them to be very relatable 
in many ways to myself and their line of thinking and even though they were very different and they had never most of them had never met each other before being initiated into this society they have a lot of common ground in a certain way um which we kind of learn towards we kind of learn as we go on with the novel which is why the text can seem kind of draining and taking a longer time to get through because you're really just learning about each character so if you're not into you know drawn out storylines there's not a lot of plot going on um or action it can be probably boring for some people but i don't know i found it fun <laughs> atlas blakely i think is his name is the caretaker caretaker of this society and he is set to gather these six people um and essentially train them i think for the people that did not finish this book really should have just pushed through that first half of the book where it's really just talking um in i don't i guess i, I wouldn't want to say in circles because i do feel like everything was purposeful so if you if you are reading it and you find it to be not as engaging or you're really waiting for the action to take on to take off i would just push through because the ending is just mind-blowing and it really makes you want to go back to the book and look at the easter eggs that the author left for you to find to make to have everything else kind of make sense which is where we're going to be in the beginning of the second book. So if you didn't finish the novel, I would suggest finishing it. Just truck through. If you haven't read it, definitely read it and pay attention to... Just pay attention. Pay attention to what you're reading because it does make sense once you get to like the last two or three chapters of the book. Okay, now that I kind of went over why I like the book in general and the basic summary, I'm gonna kind of go into specific details of the book. So if you haven't read it yet and you don't want spoilers, I would cut it here because now we're gonna get into some more uh, fun details that I want to talk about. The first person that I want to really talk about that a lot of people love which i agree is tristan i i just i fell in love with him i feel like he's just a sad puppy that wants so badly to be loved and understood and he doesn't understand himself so i really liked him as a character i feel that we got an insight a little bit into his mind through callum and through Parisa, their powers, being able to like read his emotions and understand his thoughts, I feel helped us understand him more than he can kind of decipher his own thoughts and feelings, which was really uh, cool. I love that about those two characters, even though I hate them as people, really like that because of what they're able to do, we learned more about the other characters. I really wanted to ship him and Libby together from the get-go. I think that they kind of complement each other, which we see in the scene with the her being able to stop time because of his ability to kind of like see time, which is so crazy. I feel like with the whole physics, I don't understand physics at all. So it could be really off base and not true at all in the scope of like physics and all of that, but I found it very fun. Anyway, Tristan was probably my favorite character. And then I think the author wants to ship multiple people together. So like you have the Libby and Tristan kind of thing going on. And then there is Nico and Libby, which I feel like are two halves of a whole and they could possibly be soulmates. I don't know, but there there's so many things with them that make it seem that they are that way so that was cute but then there's also like reyna and nico and them working together and him being able to use her as like an energy source and she kind of is understanding him more so i feel like even though we didn't get to see a lot of reyna's point of view because of nico we are able to see his thought process with both of those women and i'm just excited to see where that's gonna go 
there is that whole thing with Gideon and I don't really understand Gideon's point much at all other than like the last couple of chapters but still it just is very confusing and I would say if there was any qualm with this book it would be the whole Gideon's powers and really go into more detail about what he can do and describe better the walking through dreams and the different astral planes and all of that. I found that to be kind of confusing and I think I'm not alone in that. Let me know if you make any sense of what that means because I didn't. And it's just, I don't know, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? I just, I don't, I don't know yet. So there's that whole love square going on. And then there's Callum who, he's such a psychopath. And the only purpose I find in him, like for him in this whole book is that he can just read people's emotions and kind of tell people what they're thinking before they even know what they're thinking, which helps me understand them better. But then also makes me understand Callum as like even more of a crazy person. And even though we get a little snippet of his backstory and we should quote unquote feel sorry for him, I do not. I think that there's just, him and Parisa are equally bad people and yeah, um, I was really rooting for him to die. And then we have Dalton, which I feel like Dalton is being used. There is some parts in the book where we hear, we see that Parisa feels fear from him multiple times and we don't know why because his his mind is so guarded she can't really go into his mind and like read his thoughts he doesn't seem like the type of person that is that powerful to block her off other than atlas so unless atlas has some sort of control over dalton which i find to be the case let me know if you guys have other thoughts on that but he seems to be used and I hope that in the next book we'll see more of Parisa trying to help Dalton either understand himself or unlock what it is that's making him so fearful. I think going back also to the easter egg, they all make sense towards the end of the book and one of those is Atlas and his kind of lack of involvement in the book and I remember reading and I'm like, why haven't we seen Atlas either coming in, teaching the classes, or being more involved with the initiates? And I found that odd because, again, the whole book, the book is called the Atlas Six. So why wouldn't he be so, like, more involved with them, right? He seems very put together with his pinstripe suit. But again, we don't really see him much. And in my head, I thought he was like this Dumbledore-esque type of figure that is intimidated, but intimidating, but very respectable. And he is, but there is just moments where I had this feeling he didn't seem like he was almost hiding from them and being very standoffish. Again, things make more sense towards the end of the book. And I'm really excited that there's gonna be three I don't know how people don't like this book and I feel like the people that really didn't like this book just didn't finish. So that's pretty much my thoughts on the whole book. So definitely recommend this book. I'm very excited to see how the second book will take off with how the first one ended and maybe we'll get to see more people's points of view rather than just like the initiates. I'm really excited for this series and this author. I think she hopefully will be creating more books for us in the future. Um, and yeah, please let me know if you have any other recommendations. I want to know your thoughts on this book. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What made you feel that way? Um, let me know in the comments. And. I really hope you guys enjoyed this um, video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. I'm going to start making these more often because this was really fun. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will check you guys out in my next video. Bye.